the biggest series of the year for the Mariners. And quite honestly, outside of maybe the playoff series a couple of years ago, one of the biggest series in a long time that the Mariners have played. And they get it started off right with a huge, huge win in game one over the Texas Rangers. Let's go. Let's get some tridents up in the comment section. What is up? What is going on, everybody? Welcome back and welcome in to the Seattle Mariners post-game recap. Mariners defeat the Texas Rangers tonight 3-2. to two. They improve to 41-31 and 31 on the season, and they now have a six-and-a-half game lead in the American League West. What a huge win for the Mariners tonight to pull this one out. Um, a game that started out a little shaky in that first inning. Mariners battle back. Pitching gets the job done. Offense does just enough. And just such a crucial, crucial win for the Mariners. Like I said, this is the biggest series this team has played, taking away playoff series, which there haven't been a lot of those either. Uh, just, I mean, the energy, the crowd was amazing tonight. And to have this division lead with the team that's chasing you coming in here and to get game one, this team is winning some big series. This, I, let me take a step back. They've not won this series yet. But they've played pretty well in big series. Houston came in a few weeks ago, and I was a little nervous, right? Like, still respect the Astros as a good baseball team. Thought they might come in here and get right. They didn't. Texas comes in here having won two out of three against the Dodgers. And, you know, makes me a little nervous. Mariners dropped one yesterday. You know, listen, we're Mariners fans. We have been through, we've been a tough, it's been a tough franchise, right? And some of us, you know, I'm in my late 30s. Some of you, even older than me, have sat through a lot of bad baseball. So I think even someone like me who's very optimistic about this team and thinks this is a good ball club, the pessimism does enter your mind. It's just it's just normal, right? Like wh when the Seahawks were rolling, I was always kind of positive. I just believed. The Mariners just, as an organization, haven't been there yet. So I don't blame anybody for, you know, after that first inning getting like, great, here, here it comes. This is the collapse, right? But great job by Luis Castillo to settle in. Like I said, you know, the bats do enough. They do enough and the bullpen uh, locks it down. And, and a huge win for two reasons. Well, a lot of reasons it's a huge win, but two main reasons I want to focus on why this win was so huge. Number one, um, Urena for the Rangers saved their bullpen. He went four and a third, three and a third Urena went for them. So the Rangers bullpen is full on ready to go tomorrow. All their high leverage arms ready to rock and roll. Andres Munoz probably down tomorrow. After pitching Thursday, pitch tonight, you're probably not seeing Munoz tomorrow. So if you if you had lost this game or blown it in the ninth, it would have been a brutal, brutal loss to come back from. Um, not saying they couldn't. You feel good with George Kirby on the mound tomorrow for sure. But it just, it, it would have set up very nice for Texas the rest of the series. Another reason this win is so huge, the worst case scenario, the absolute worst case scenario in this series now for the Mariners is they leave it four and a half games up on Texas. That's still a pretty substantial lead. I hope it's more. I want them to win this series. I want them to sweep. You've got two games now here to win the series with George Kirby and Logan Gilbert going. You got to feel pretty good about that. Give me, give me one, give me both. I would love it. Go up eight and a half games. Amazing. But the worst case scenario, you're still sitting four and a half games up. The only thing that would really... The only thing this series that would have really, really hurt and kind of crushed you was the Rangers sweeping. It would have gotten them to two and a half games back, probably gets them just a lot of momentum, you know, feeling like, okay, we are, you know, this is dead even race now. That can't happen anymore. So, you know, again, I want the sweep. I want the series win. This is not me saying like, oh, now you can lose them. No, 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 no. Go win it. But the worst case scenario is on June, what's today's date? Today is the 14th. On June 16th, the worst case scenario is the Mariners will have a four and a half game lead in the division. And if you would have told me in April that that would be the case, I, I say it all the time, I would have signed that dotted line in a heartbeat. But let's focus on the here and now. And right now, the Mariners have a six and a half game lead in this division. By the way, if I didn't say it already, like, comment, and subscribe down below. Appreciate it. I'm just one sub away from 3,600 on the road to 4,000. I don't know if I already said I had to restart this video once, so I apologize. It's my second time saying it, but I'll plug the channel one more time. Let's get into the box score of this win. Pitching the name of the game, and Luis Castillo was fantastic tonight. Six innings, four hits, two runs, two earned, one walk, seven Ks. A little bit of a tough start in the first inning. Looked like it might be a bit of a long night, potentially. Um, Nathaniel Lowe drives in 
uh, Marcus Simeon with the double, then Wyatt Langford singles in Nathaniel Lowe. Mariners are down 2-0 right out of the gate. Now, in Castillo's defense, Marcus Simeon had a swinging bunt that he reached on for a base hit, so it's not like Simeon crushed the ball or anything like that. So, you know, a little bit unlucky, but Lowe and Langford both hit the ball, I think, over 110 off the bat. So they stung the ball pretty good off Castillo. So it was a little bit shaky, but a huge response by the Mariners in the bottom of the first uh, with the Mitch Garver home run after, I think it was Julio that walked. And it was all with two outs because Hanniger, JP lined out, Hanniger struck out, Julio walks, and then Mitch Garver hits the home run, which I did call on Twitter. For the record, it is out there. Um, then I went about 0 for 8 with the rest of my predictions the rest of the game. But I did get that one, which was nice. But, um, you know, great great response from the Mariners. And we've seen this team get down early and just they, they can't find a way to claw back. And they did that tonight, which was huge. And it just, that quick momentum shift. Because again, you know, what did I say about the Houston series last month? You were going to get everything they had in that series to win it. Everything. Same here with Texas. Despite a sluggish start to this season, these teams are coming in here thinking, listen, we can win this series or sweep this series. We're right back in this. Just takes three games. Just these three games. And Texas gets those two big runs in the first inning. Probably feeling pretty good. Here we go. We just took two out of three in L.A., we come to Seattle, we get two big runs right off the bat. We are in great shape and we're rolling right now. We are rolling. And for the Marist, for Garver to get that home run in the bottom of the first was a huge, huge response. But yeah, going back to Castillo, absolutely fantastic after that first inning, settled down with five shutout innings where he only gave up one hit um, and one walk the rest of the way. Castillo absolutely dialed in. That's why you push Castillo back for this series. I don't want him, you know, listen, Pitching Castillo against Crochet, I think, would have been a mistake. That was just a tough matchup. And like I said, Castillo probably would have had more strikeouts than Hancock yesterday, maybe looked a little better, but I don't think the results would have been any better. And then you would have been, you know, I'm not saying Kirby or Gilbert, or it would have been Kirby tonight, wouldn't have gotten the job done, but you just feel a little bit better knowing that everyone's got an extra day's rest and you were able to go to Luis Castillo tonight. He was fantastic. And again, I will reiterate, he is still my game one guy. Love Kirby, love Gilbert, love Bryce Miller, love Brian Wu. I mean, you could make a case for all of them, but I'm still throwing the Rock La Piedra game one in a playoff series. Mike Bauman bounces back with a really nice inning, um, gets a strikeout. He struck out. Who was it that he struck out? Let's pull up the play-by-play -play here for the seventh inning. Struck out Tavares on a beautiful split, or I think it was split or slider, just dropped in there on Tavares, great pitch. And then two quick outs of Duran and Kinzer. Um, to get out of that inning. Good to see from Bauman. A couple rough outings his last few times out. Blew the save to the White Sox and the Royals. Bauman is good. He has looked really solid. He's been a nice pickup. A and we can pound the table for reliever, but I think Bauman's giving you what you would expect from an acquired reliever at the deadline or something like that. Or, you know, whoever it is you want to go get. I think Bauman's giving you that production. Yeah, the, the two blown saves stink, right? That the good news is the Mariners won both those games. Listen, the White Sox won. It wasn't a good pitch. Luis Robertson sank, right? Like, he got you. And in Kansas City, I just, I think that was almost like a predetermined, the Royals were just not going to go away easily. <laughs> not making excuses for Bauman. He didn't pitch well in those spots. But um, I, I think he's been fine overall. And, and yes, I prefer him more in the seventh against the bottom half of the lineup than I would in the eighth or ninth against against. Yeah, I can't speak against the heart of the order, but Bauman's done a nice job and has been a really, really nice pickup for a team that needed some bullpen help. The Mariners have done a good job with that, with finding, I mean, we, we know they have, right? They found tons of under the radar guys, Seawald, uh, Topa, Spire, Saucedo, but even at the deadlines making these acquisitions, you know, 2021, they were fighting for a playoff spot and they went out and got Diego Castillo and Joe Smith. Yes, they gave up Kendall Graveman, but both those guys pitched just as good as Graveman did down the stretch. I'm not saying that was necessarily a good trade because Toro didn't give you much, although he played pretty well in 2021. Not here to recycle that debate, but they did a good job finding a couple guys to fill the gap. Then in last year, Trent Thornton, right? We were talking about needing a reliever. Trent Thornton pitched really well for them. Yeah, these guys have flaws. Listen, a lot of relievers do. The reason a guy like Andres Munoz is so special is because there's not a lot of them. Same with the Matt Brash. Same with Santos when he's on and healthy. 
So, yeah, you're not going to get a lot of guys like that because they're just not out there. What you're going to be able to do is trust your scouting department to find guys with good stuff that maybe you're just something needs to be tinkered. And that's a Mike Bauman. And Bauman has done a, a real nice job, I think, overall. Andres Munoz comes in the eighth. Yes, that was the right decision with Simeon on deck and Corey Seager in the hole. And then plus if one person reaches, which they did, Seager walked, you have Adolis Garcia coming up. So yes, going to Munoz in the eighth inning was the right decision. In my opinion, again, I, I never say anything's 100% definitive outside. If you know it's 100% definitive, Merrill's got the W tonight. That's 100% definitive. But, you know, I, I think it's fair to debate it, but I think it was the right decision. I want Munoz facing the team's best hitters. I, I just don't put a lot of stock into what inning it is in. Um, that like, oh, a guy can't lock down the ninth inning. Because if that's the case, then you'd never have a good closer. Like every good closer started out at some point not pitching in the ninth, right? So this notion that, yes, I, I listen, I get it. The ninth inning can is tougher. It's the end of the game. Like I, I do understand that, but I, I don't think you necessarily have to use just save it, you know, for a closer. I don't think you need a traditional closer. I'm fine with, I wouldn't even mind using Munoz if let's say Castillo loaded the bases in the sixth inning with one out and Simeon's up. I'm not against going to Munoz in that spot. That's the tightest, the high, excuse me, the highest leverage situation you'll face. Go to your best reliever in that. And I know, I, I know people have asked, but then what do you do the rest of the game? Listen, the bullpen outside of Munoz is, is a little patchwork, right? You, you don't have all the guys you trust, but that's going to be the same no matter what. So my comment back to that would be, so do you go to Bauman in the sixth inning? What if he gives up the runs or what if Stanek does or somebody else because you didn't use your best guy? Well, then you never use Munoz and you had a really high leverage situation that went by without using your best arm. That's just how I look at it. Disagree. That's totally fine. Let's all just enjoy a Mariners W, but that's just kind of my take on it. So I, I thought going to Munoz in the eighth was absolutely fine and the right decision. Uh, Munoz strikes out the side. He gets um, Wenzel, Wenzel, is that how you say it? Wenzel on a strikeout on a nasty slider. Gets Simeon, got some borderline calls against Simeon. But again, listen, I, I actually don't mind certain pitchers getting borderline calls when it's really good pitchers. It drives me nuts when a pitcher not throwing strikes will get a bailout 3-0 call or a bad pitcher. But, you know, I expect, like last night, I, and I'm not saying it happened, but Garrett Crochet deserves pitches on the corners. He's good. Felix Hernandez deserved pitches on the corners. Andres Munoz deserves it. He has earned it with his reputation to throw strikes. So, yes, they were borderline, but he got the call against Simeon. Walk Seager actually didn't have a huge problem with that. It kind of seemed like an unintentional, intentional walk. Um, Culber is, a, I don't have a problem with it. Corey Seager is really good and can hit you. And it allows Munoz to face Garcia versus having to have Stanek face Garcia. I know Adolis Garcia has been scuffling a bit and his OPS is at 691 on the year, but I think he's a better hitter than that. And, and I think he'll get it going. He had a double tonight. So I'd rather see Munoz versus Garcia than Stanek. Just being honest. Um, Munoz does get called for a balk. I've noticed Munoz has been really with the, pulling the, you know, when he's going to throw his pitch with, with the kind of bringing the glove down, it seems way more pronounced this year than in the past. I think he's always done it a little bit, but a lot more this year. Now, do I think the ball call is correct? No, he's been doing that every pitch, but in the ump's defense, and the only reason I'm saying that is a couple nights ago, I was watching the game with the fam and I said, I wonder if Munoz is going to get called on a balk for that at some point, because he really does kind of violently jerk it down a little bit. Um, you know, with the glove. So I, I get where that could be viewed as a balk. And I can't make that comment and say, oh, I wonder if he's going to call for a balk and then get mad when it happens. Because obviously I thought it was a possibility too. So do I think it's a balk? I, I, balks are weird. It's one of those things that like, you know, nobody really knows the rule. I mean, I get it. It's coming set. And then, you know, you know what I mean? So like, I, I understand the rule of it, but you know, I think it's one of those ones where it's just such a judgment call. It's the same thing with that bunt that the Mariners had that Bruce Bochy got tossed on. It's kind of just judgment calls. I'm not even sure what the rule is there. I heard them saying Robles can't run in the grass. Then it's like, well, he didn't impede. Then Ted Barrett's on with Apple TV saying he didn't impede the throw or anything like that. So I have no idea on some of these what the rules are. Anyways, Munoz gets called for the balk. 
but then gets Garcia to strike out. So great outing by Munoz. And then Stanek shuts it down in the ninth. Great play on the, the little grounder from Nathaniel Lowe. Stanek makes an athletic play, gets the tag. Even if he didn't get the tag, Lowe was out of the base path anyways. Nice play there by Stanek. Langford rips a double. Luke Rayleigh played that fantastic. Thought he had a chance to catch it. Played it perfectly off the wall. Barehanded it. And truthfully, almost got him at second. Langford didn't slide. Kind of went in standing up. He was like he didn't come off the bag. I actually thought he did. I actually thought that might have been worth a challenge. Just because it's the ninth inning. You know, you're up by one. You, you haven't used a challenge yet. I actually thought that might have been worth a second look. Because I did think his foot may have come off the bag. I don't think it would have been overturned. But I think it may have just been worth it to be like, you know what? Go look at that. Go look at that for a minute. But then Stanek gets Smith to pop out and gets um, Duran to ground out. So Stanek gets the job done in the ninth. Scott Service's decision to go to Munoz in the eighth and Stanek in the ninth pays off because they get the job done. And I'm not sure if I really want Stanek facing Simeon and Seeger in the eighth. So great job there. Offensively, J.P. Crawford, one for three with the walk. J.P. on base twice. Had a tough series against the White Sox, so good to see him on base a couple times to start this one off. Mitch Hanniger was quietly two for four. I actually don't remember the Hanniger hits. Actually, yes, I do. He had the one that made it first and third in the um, third inning, and then he had what I thought was going to be a double in the eighth, but ended up being a single. So a couple decent games here for Mitch Hanniger of late. Had a real nice game Monday in the comeback against the White Sox. A couple hits tonight. Would like to see Mitch put a couple out of the ballpark, for sure. Kind of same talking about with Julio. Would like to see some more slugging. But good to see Mitch getting dialed in with a couple hits. Uh, they moved Mitch Hanniger up to second in the order tonight um, and moved Dylan Moore down. I think it was time to move Dylan Moore down. He's just been scuffling. There's no great option. Do I think Mitch Hanniger is the best two-hole hitter? No. But I, I really don't know what else you could do. I mean, Garver might actually make some sense because he's drawing a lot of walks. But then, you know, do you want someone with that little speed in the two hole, maybe not. Um, but it, it might make some sense with how he's been able to get on base, but not a lot of great options right now. Julio was over three, did have an RBI ground and a walk. So Julio technically gets the uh, winning RBI crazy that Rangers scored two in the top of the first Mariners scored two in the bottom of the first Mariners score one in the third. And that was it the rest of the way. Great game for Mitch Garver one for two with the two run home run plus two walks. Garver has really heated up on base three times today. Uh, Cal was 0 for 4. Tough game for Cal. Dylan Moore did go 1 for 4. Had a base hit in the 8th inning. Good to see. Tyler Locklear had a base hit as well. Good to see. Um, and looking forward to getting Ty France back for sure. But Locklear has done a nice job. Victor Robles, 2 for 2. Had a line drive base hit. Then a beautiful bunt single. Talked about it a little bit with the ruling there. I, I, again, I, I don't really know what the, the rules are in some of these things. So, um you know, originally it was like, oh, he can't be on the grass. Then, like I said, Ted Baird saying that, no, it didn't impede the throw or anything. And, and Lowe had a fair chance to grab the, you know, to catch the ball. So it's fine. Bottom line is it goes down the books as a hit. Robles has done a pretty nice job since coming over, honestly. He had that, dropped that fly ball, I think, in his first start against Oakland. But other than that, he's looked pretty good. He, he had a double in the gap against Kansas City last Friday that scored a run. Just missed a home run off Crochet last night. Hit another one at 109. And then two for two today. Victor Robles is contributing. Nice little pickup so far for the Bears. We'll see how it you know keeps it up. But Robles has done a nice job so far. I, I've been impressed. And he, he doesn't look overmatched at the plate, to be honest. So I, I've liked what I've seen and a good defensive player. So been impressed with Victor Robles so far. Um, Luke Rayleigh pinched hit was 0 for 1. Uh, Ryan Bliss was 0 for 2. And Josh Rojas pinched hit was 0 for 1. Um... I talked about that with this is again, I'm giving credit to my man Mariner Sir on this. Um, it's actually something I was going to bring up as well. So we're both on the same page here. I, I think I, I would send Bliss down and see if you can get Urias back up. Now, Urias, I believe, was optioned to Triple A, um, or excuse me, he was um, assigned to Dakota. Like basically, he was taken off the 40 man. I, I don't know, whatever they did, waved him, whatever. He's still in Tacoma, but he's not on the 40 man roster. So you would have to make a roster move, but I, I think he'd be getting better production from Luis Urias. I love Ryan Bliss. Um, good spark plug, good defender, not strong star, but a good defensive player. Get his speed on the base pass. He can make things happen. And he's looked okay at the plate. He's had some solid line drives and some hard hit balls, but man, the strikeout rate, I think is like close to 50% or something. I, I think Urias is going to give you more production. 
And I didn't even think Urias, I, mean, I know his numbers weren't great, but I thought one of the reasons for his numbers drop off was he was just playing so much against righties as well um, with some of the injury stuff going on that when Polanco went down because Rojas was playing second, that, um, you know, I think Urias got overexposed a little bit, but I, I think he'd be giving you better at-bats. Now, Bliss is going to give you better base running, probably better defense. So again, you know, pick your poison, but I wouldn't mind seeing that move. And again, like I said yesterday, I love Bliss, but I'm ready to see Jorge Polanco uh, come back. I'm not giving up on Polanco just yet. So for the Mariners overall, they strike out six times, walk four times, eight hits, three runs. Thought they actually did pretty good against Andrew Haney. Four and two thirds, six hits, three run, three earned, three walks, four Ks. You know, they put base runners on him. Yeah, again, would have been nice. I thought they had some chances to add on against him. Couldn't do it. Uh, Hanniger had that bat with the bases loaded that I, I think Hanniger four years ago beats that out pretty easily and you get the extra run. Then who knows what happens the rest of the inning. But I thought they had some good at-bats against Haney. Um, you know, again, kind of what we talked about the Mariners, you know, not, last night notwithstanding, but you know, th they do a decent job against some starting pitching sometimes that they, they, they just don't deliver the knockout blow. And they had a chance tonight. They just couldn't quite deliver that big hit to chase the starter. They got it um, when they were playing the Angels. Who was it that was pitching for the Angels? It wasn't Griffin Canning. It was, oh gosh, it's going to drive me absolutely bonkers. Now, who was the pitcher for the Angels on that Saturday game that the Mariners won? And, oh gosh, and, and now I've got to, I've got to find out who that was. Reed Detmers. I sorry, I had to go look that up. It was just I, I wouldn't have been able to concentrate in the rest of the post game recap. Um, you know, he was a guy that was kind of on the hook. JP hits the grand slam, knock him out. You're just kind of missing that. Uh, now, I was not impressed how they did against Urea. Um, you know, he's fine, but just kind of your average generic pitcher that I feel like the Mariners should have done a little bit more against and added a run or two. That was a little frustrating. And he did a nice job eating up three and a third for the Rangers, saving their bullpen for tomorrow. That was more frustrating than what they did against Haney. I thought they did all right against Haney overall. Um, you know, yes, you'd like more than three runs for sure, but, you know, they did enough. They did enough. And the strength of this team is pitching. The offense doesn't have to be perfect. It's just got to be better than the other team's offense, right? And, and that's what they did tonight. Great W. Great way to start off this series. So pumped. I'm so excited for this series. And it's just fun. It's fun to be able to watch this team that's competitive, that's in first place, knowing how important these games are. And ladies and gentlemen, this team has a six and a half game lead in the AL West. Six and a half games. Absolutely crazy. Absolutely cool. Let's make it seven and a half tomorrow. Go get that W tomorrow. Tough matchup against Nathan Evaldi. Make it happen, right? Like your goal is to win the division. Go beat them. Kirby, be good. You know, keep the Rangers off the board and go get another W tomorrow night. Have a good one, everybody. I'm going to get out of here. Mariners win it. Like, comment, subscribe, and I will see you guys all tomorrow night for the post-game recap. Tridents up. Go Mariners. Peace.